Yes. What are microphones for? To talk a little bit. Well, to pick, oh, no. to pick up the sound better, right? Be loud. So see, when I talk into this, the camera can hear me better. Uh, okay, this is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about tools. Uh, you guys ever used a tool? Yes. What kind of tools have you used? An axe. An axe. Chainsaw. Chainsaw, that's alarming, but we'll keep moving. <laughs> a what? Oh yeah, an axe with me. How about flamethrower? Flamethrower. Okay. You guys are. Oh, that's right. You guys are straining credulity with that. How about a like a saw, hammer, screwdriver? Yeah. What's them uh, the squeezy things? What do you call this? What? Uh, squeezies. Squeezies. Squeezy Pliers. Channel locks, pliers. How about a wrench? Yes. All right. So those are tools so you can do like build houses or fix your cars. There's different kinds of tools. Listen, human beings, a long time ago when you lived outside, had to have certain tools, things they used. If you're living outside, you'd have to have special tools, things that could help you stay alive. Last week, we learned about the rule of threes. Three minutes is important to stop for or check for breathing, 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 not, bleeding. not bleeding, and do breathing. And then you got three hours to do what? Make sure they don't die because after, if they're not bleeding oh, and they're breathing, temperature. body temperature, they can freeze. So what do you think the first tool human beings ever had was? Arrow? Axe. An axe or arrows would be good, but would they help you not freeze? No. no. Probably like fire. A stick? Fire. A stick? fire would help, but even before fire. Torch. Flint and steel. That was set on fire and yeah. made into coats and ate. Most of that was correct. So animals that they would make into coats, they would use um, like their skins or something to wear. So clothing is probably the first clothing or we say clothing, we just say blanket because a blanket can be, blanket can be clothing, blanket can keep you warm. You could have a bear skin rug. You could get um, rabbit skin rugs and make a blanket out of it. What else do people need besides stay warm? Gloves would be a part of clothing. Well, like, like this, my hat. Hat's a great piece of tool. It's not a hat. That's yeah, my hat. It's a, buff. it's a beanie. Yeah, it's a buff, but this is a closed off beanie. What else do you need to stay alive? Uh, food. Uh, yeah. What else? Water. So what do you have to, can you guys just pick water up with your hands? Uh, I mean, you, you can, but not enough. A bucket. So you need something to put your water in. We're going to call them a container. Because you need something to put your water in. That's important. Now what else? How would you get that skin off the animal? A knife. A knife. Well, yeah, kill them first. Nobody likes to be skinned until they're killed. Uh, so you need a knife or something to cut with. Did you guys ever see or hear about caveman, the caveman, cave women, like uh, the Croods, that cartoon? Yeah. And they live inside the cave? How did they get in there with the, what do you call a thing you dig with? They could use a pickaxe. Hey. Yeah, they could find one or you could dig your own hole. So you need tools that you can cut and dig with. Like a pickaxe? Now, the there's, yard. you need, what do you call a... Uh, do you guys ever have to um, zip your shirt or button your coats or tie? So you need something to, yeah, zipper or pull stuff together, right? What do you call, Rope. what do you use, what is it? Rope. Rope. That's another tool that they had. Rope. Now somebody's mentioned it a couple times. Bow what? And bow and arrow is a good one. I'm getting to that. Yeah. What can you use to cook your food, boil your water, stay fire. warm? Fire. fire. Oh, flint and steel. So you have to have a fire kit, some way to make fire and light, so you can see at night. How would they have a fire kit? Well, there's different ways to do it. You can use a flint and steel. You can use a ferrocerium rod. Not when the cavemen were, they weren't flint and steel. There were sticks and rocks. You can rub sticks together and get enough friction going that you can start that with what's called a bow drill. Some rocks, did you guys ever bump rocks together and see a spark? Yeah. Some rocks have enough quartz and then you hit some iron and you get a little flint or something. Do you guys know you live near a city named Flint? Flint, yeah. Michigan? Do you know why it's named Flint? Because there was a bunch of flint. Because there was a bunch of flint or chert in the area and they used to use that for arrowheads and spearheads and fire start. Here's a couple others you guys might not know. There's a, a tools called salt and needle. I know what a needle. 
sling and spear. And a book. So I'm going to show you a bunch of the tools. Then we're going to do one today. We're going to do a, a craft. I'll show you how to do it. And I'm going to give you something to take home to practice. We're going to do all the tools in the next few weeks. So that if you ever were outside, you can make your own tools if you don't have them with you. Okay. Now making a knife would be tough, but you could use a sharp rock or something. I'll show you how to do that later. Yes. I made spears before. Made a spear before? Just, there's a knot in part of it, so I made the spear part. Oh, yeah? All right, now I'll show you some of the tools I had laid out, so I can show you an example of each. Now I probably should put the bikes on. Oh, I'm going to keep it against the wall. I'll hold them up so you guys can see them, so you can sit down. The first tool is the most important. That's your clothing. Yeah. What happens if you go outside in just a t-shirt and shorts and no socks, no coat, no hat? You wouldn't last very long, would you? Well, if it's summer, what if you got, anybody ever get a sunburn from being out in the sun? No. No. Third degree burn from the sun? Holy smokes. Again, stretching uh, credulity there. But sometimes you get too hot or too cold, so human beings use clothes, right? You guys all have clothes. Everybody's got pants. Some of you have socks. Some of you have sweaters. Some of you have little slippers. You got a hat. I've got a hat. He's got a hood. She's got a hood. Socks. Right? So look, here's some different types of clothing. This is just a piece of cloth. Watch this way, girls. This is a piece of cloth. I can use this for lots of things. This is a piece of cloth that's sewn into a circle. So I could use that for clothing. Yep. If you must, go. Come right back. So look, let's say I lived out in like Hawaii or a tropical island where it's hot all the time. Would I wear jeans and a hat and a shirt and everything? No. no. Be too hot. So I'd use one of these things as my clothing. I'd pull it up here and fold it over and just roll it down. That's it. And now I've got Now I've got a Now I got a skirt or a dress or a kilt. Kilt, right? Yeah, Scotland or Ireland, the kilt, Welsh, Wales, yes? That's kind of nerve-wracking. Is it? <laughs> what if the wind blows? <laughs> well, it won't blow it up that high. But I do like this. There's other ways to wrap, uh, uh, like, underwear out of co clothes, too, or cords. So, this could be a piece of clothing. I have, I have a towel I can use for different things. I have... This is a special type of clothing. This is made out of waterproof plastic. Right, so if it's raining out, I can put this on and I stay, and I stay dry under there. That's a special type of clothing. Also keeps the wind off me, helps me stay warm. Okay, if I have, let's say I left my hat at home and I start to get cold out, right? I can use this big square of cloth to make a hat, right? I could just, maybe the sun's too hot. I don't have any hair, so my head would get sunburned, so I just put that over my head, right? Now I've got a hood like you guys have on your sweatshirts. But if the wind would blow it off, I can twist it. Uh, it's called a hoodie. Yeah, and I can make a hat out of it. Like the, the one in Saudi Arabia. Right, Saudi Arabia and Middle East. Or if I live in the desert, now I've made a turban out of it. See the back of my neck is covered? Right? And I can't get, my ears won't get sunburned because they're hiding. So I could do this with it. That's pretty cool. Maybe I want it to hide because there's a, there's a lot of sand or it's really cold out. Like Michigan gets cold in the winter. Sometimes. I can wrap this under my chin and wrap the front of it around my nose. And now I made a snow hood. Or a ski mask. Or a ski mask, right? Yeah, but now my whole face is warm except my eyes. <laughs> yeah, I gotta see. So, this is a good piece of uh, tool to have because you can make lots of different clothing out of it. If it's not that cold out, I just wrap it around my neck and make a scarf out of it, right? Because now my heat won't get out of my neck. If I have a scarf and my hat, I could go outside like this, right? No problem. 
If it's a little colder, I break out my blanket. Remember that space blanket we used to keep Bob alive? See, now I'm warm. This would get in the way if I was trying to do stuff though, right? So that's why we invented coats, like a special sewed, a sewed up piece of tool. All right, another tool you're gonna want besides your clothing, and if you're gonna go outside, you gotta pick the right clothing. All right, listen, I'm gonna show you, tell you this, you gotta remember it. There's no such thing as bad weather. Do you ever hear somebody say, oh, it's bad weather out today? Nope, no such thing. It's just poor clothing choice. What's bad about the rain? The plants need the water. What's bad about the snow? It kills off the germs for a few months so you don't get sick. Kills off the mosquitoes. Like Norway? I don't know, but it was just a thing, and they had, they had... Yeah, they say that about clothing, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's snowing out and you're cold, when I go outside, I just put on a coat and a hat and gloves and mittens, and I'm not cold. No, you're still cold. You yeah. might be cold. I'm not cold. Sometimes Next tool is a container. I have to have something to put my water in. Usually this is just a water bottle. This one's made out of metal, so I could put it in the fire and boil my water. <laughs> Because you can't drink water, you don't boil, because you will get sick. And I have a cup, I can also boil the water in and then pour it into here, or I can pour some in here and drink while that's <coughs> boiling. You could also use a bigger container. This is my, my cooking pot. I take this camping with me because I make my soups and I boil lots of water all at once, or sometimes I just use this as a cup. If I'm really thirsty, or when we do hot chocolate, I make my hot chocolate in this because I like it. So besides having containers, next you have to have things to cut and dig with. The usual thing, and we're going to learn this in a few weeks, is uh, a knife. We're going to do knife safety. I'll talk to you about the parts. You guys probably have knives. And I'm going to show you how to do some basic carving. This is another good cutting tool. Could I cut down a tree with my knife? I could, but it would, it would take a long time. So this is another cutting tool. This is called... A hatchet, right? Or a tomahawk. No questions yet. And this I can chop down a tree or split wood because it's a little bigger. So that's good to have with you, a good cutting tool. What's this type of cutting tool called? A saw. A saw. It's got all those teeny tiny little knives on there. And when it goes back and forth across the wood, each one makes a little cut. How many teeth do you think that has? 50, 100 maybe? So now every time I push across, instead of making one cut with my knife, I'm making like a hundred cuts at a time. So that goes faster. What do you, uh, and then another tool that's like cutting and digging or cut is something you can cut the earth with and move the dirt. Cause sometimes I have to dig. This is a teeny shovel. I couldn't dig a lot with this, but if I have to go to the bathroom in the woods, you're going to have to dig what's called a cat hole. Yeah. There's no toilets in the woods. So you can take your little shovel. And you're going to dig a hole. Shh. Remember, be respectful. You guys are talking too much. You dig a hole that deep so you can do your business in the hole. And then you fill it back in. So unless you want to dig in the ground like a, like a cat or some other animal, you need a shovel. And I'm going to show you how to use the shovels. Next is rope. You got to have rope to tie stuff together. Or you could use tape. There's thicker rope. There's cordage, there's stretchy cords. Uh, this is gonna be our project today. I'm gonna show you how to make rope. If you don't have rope with you, I always have a little piece of rope in my pocket in case my shoelace breaks or my belt breaks. I can use it for lots of stuff. I'm gonna show you guys how to make rope today. Dad does, but we don't. We're still children. Now, I also have to have fire to stay warm, so I carry this thing. This is called a ferro rod. Ooh, yeah, I won't do that right now. This is like a flint and steel, and if I scrape it with my knife, it makes it makes sparks. Then I can use that to start a fan. Uh, I can use this to start a campfire, so I don't freeze. So this is good to have. 
Now, and then I have a little little Tinder kit that goes with it. I also can use this. You guys seen these before? Yes. So if it's dark and I make a fire, I can stay warm and I can see. You but can. what if I have to go, I did give you one. What if I have to go over there to use the bathroom and it's dark? I can't take the fire with me. I use a glow stick or a headlamp. Or a flashlight, a headlamp. This is, a, this is this is the kind you can put around your head so that I don't have to hold my hands. I can just point it where I need to see. Now my hands are free. So having something to start fire and light is a good idea. That's another set of tools. I just need light because I can see in the dark. Well, that's uh, an awesome ability, but the rest of us are going to use light. Now, your next one is called a salt needle kit. This is what you use to care for yourself and your gear. So we did some of that last week. First aid stuff is part of your salt and needle kit. You got to have first aid stuff in case you run into an accident, but you also need some toilet paper or wipes so you can do your business. Now, if you wipe with a leaf, what if you use the wrong leaf and you get the poison ivy? That would be no fun. No. All right, see this other bag? Here's what else I keep in my little bag. I keep dental floss and a toothbrush and toothpaste. Because that's important. I got to take care of my oral hygiene. I also keep a little thing of soap or hand sanitizer in my bag because after I do my business in the bushes. Or maybe we catch a fish and we're going to clean the fish. I got to wash my hands off. Then I keep some chapstick in my bag because chapstick can be used for lots of stuff. Chap lips. If I get a little cut on my finger, I can put chapstick on it. It keeps it from getting dirty. Keeps it clean. Chapstick can be used like wax to make a candle or start your fire. So you got to have a little salt and needle stuff. And this is a little roll of tape and inside there's thread and inside's a needle. In case I rip a hole in my clothes, I can fix it. So that's my salt and needle stuff. That's the other class of tools. How do you think cavemen made um, needles? Um, out, of bushes. out of bushes. Did you guys ever eat a chicken leg? Animal. You never had a chicken leg? A drumstick? Hold on, no question. Yet. You know that little sharp bone in the chicken leg? Yeah. That's called the chicken's fibula. No. Say fibula. Your fibula is on the outside of your leg. Yeah. Those are so sharp you can dry them out. And you can use those as a needle. Yes? Shh. What? Maybe. Look here. The next set of tools is called the book. That means ways that you can communicate with other people if you're too far away in space or time to talk. So how can I talk to you tomorrow if we don't see each other? A telephone. Telephone? What if they didn't have telephones? I could write them. I could write a message on some paper and leave it for you. And then tomorrow when you find it, you could read it. This compass is a way that I can find, I can find which way the directions are and communicate that to other people. So that's part of my salt and needle kit or my book kit. Yes. Do you have a compass? Okay. Next one. Last one is called the sling and spear. This is the tools that we hunt with or protect ourselves. This is called a sling. We're going to make these in the next unit. Okay. You gave, me, you gave me a sling. Yeah, we're going to make more. The sling goes around your finger and you hold that knot and you put a rock in there and it spins around and throws like that. No, slings can hurt you. We're going to make some slings and do it next time. Not like that. And this, of course, is a spear. Listen up. If you guys go through all the UV kids levels and get to the adult levels, and then you're a tenderfoot and a wayfinder and elder. Once you pass all the tests in the book and you learn all the stuff, then you get to be a guide and you get a spear, but it's going to take you a little while. This would be something cavemen hunted with. You can make one out of a sharp stick, but this is an actual, an actual spear, right? Not a toy, because that thing is super sharp. I could use that for my knife, too, couldn't I? Cut things with it. You could cut down a tree with it. So that would be super handy. All right. Yes. It is, isn't it? I could get a fish. Hold on.
Okay, everybody needs a rope. Thank you. Did you get one? You got a rope? Can I ask my question? Sure. We're going to when we make rope. I didn't hear your question. All right, watch this. I'm going to give you guys some rope to take home to practice some knots with. Now listen, there are several types. What is a, what is a knot? Don't put the ropes around your parts, never around your necks, arms, legs, never around a person. Okay, because ropes are dangerous. Remember what happened with that tourniquet? Remember what happened with that tourniquet last week? Yeah. Belt's a little bit of a different circumstance. Don't tie it to That tourniquet got around Bob so tight it stopped his blood flow. Ropes can do the same thing, so you have to be super careful. Find both ends of your rope. Now listen, there are binds. Hitches, bends, loops, and knots. We're going to learn a, a knot today. Actually, it's called a bend, but that's right. You guys got your ropes part? Find both ends. Oh, you already have a knot in yours, right? What happened? There you go. Here, dear. Let me see if I can pull that apart for you. There you go. Let me see. So some of them are tied up for storage. So did you get yours all done, guys? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. You got both ends. No, yeah. <clears throat> this knot is called the square knot or reef knot. You guys have to get your knot bead later. You have to know 24 knots. This is the first one. Watch this. Watch me do it. I'm going to tie, pretend this is two separate ropes and I want to tie my ropes together. Can I borrow your rope, Ray, for a minute? Let's say I have an orange rope and it's too short and I need to add some rope to it. This is how you do it. I put the left over the right and the right over the left. And now they're stuck together. Right? Let me show you. Shh. All right, listen. Right goes like this. I'm looking at my rope. My right's going to go over my left okay. and under. I'm going to show you one at a time. Then my left one goes over and under. And I'll get this where it's the two little parts together. It looks like an, a figure eight. See how it makes a square? Did I do it? No, you made what's called a granny knot. Try again. All right, everybody try it and I'll see if you did it. You didn't see? Here, you guys come watch this on the floor. This makes more sense. So I got a right and a left. I put my right one over top of my left and then I pull it under. Then I go left over the right and pull it through. And I've got a square knot. Very good. Not quite. Knots are tough, aren't they? You almost got it. So close. All right, watch this. First time you did it. Nope. How many times am I going to make a granny knot? Uh, I don't know. However long you like it. All right, so let's break into a couple groups here so everybody can see me do it. All right, this is just like tying your... My thing is too long. Hey, who's, who knows how to tie their shoes yet? Maybe. You remember the first knot you do when you tie your shoes? Watch this. So I cross them over, left over, and I pull it through. That's the first part? That's half of the square knot. Now to make the rest of the square knot, you do the other side. And now I've made a square knot. Normally you do, do it? you did it. Grace Cat. And normally you do this. Very good. And you make bunny ears. Okay. Girls, boys, let's everybody sit down. I'll show you one more time. 
Less talking, more listening. You have two ears and one mouth. All right, here we go. Take your right hand. And you cross it over top, so you made like an X. And then the right goes under, and now you got your ropes again. And it should look like it's got a twist in it. Now do the same thing from the left over the right and twist it around. And then you'll end up with a square. This is tough. You did that part right. Now do this and go over the other side, and you did it. You did it. Good job. Yep, pull it a little closer together. You did it. Good job. That's excellent. Good job. High five. Now go do it again. And then you guys come over here, and I'll, I'll use your hands and show you how to do it. Okay, so you stand first. All right. So turn around that way. Hold your rope. And you put your right one over your left. And then your left one goes over your right and it goes behind there. And now you have a square knot. Good job. Now you practice. Ready, George? You're next, Ray. All right, so right goes over your left and behind. And now left goes over your right and behind. And you got it. Now practice again. Try again, bud. Clarice, you're next. So right over to left and go under. And then left goes over the right and goes under. <laughs> Good job. Now do it again. Did you do it? Okay, this one goes like a snake. He goes over and under. He looks around. And then he goes over that one and around. And now you got your square knot. Let's see. Oh, that's not bad. I don't know how. <laughs> All right. so, I've tried it like 30 times already. 30? Yes. All right. So, so, so your right goes over your left. Over. And then it tucks him behind. Under. Yeah. Now you got a left and a right. Now you go left over the right. Over. And tuck him behind. Under. Now pull. And you see how it makes two interlocking. I I realize yeah, you what it. you're doing. Now you do it. Make I your don't know how to do make how your do fingers do it. do it. Look what I did. Do what he did. Excellent job, bud. So right goes behind. Just, I like doing it. Then left goes no, behind. So Just like that. Now make it look like that. Like this. Like. Hey, you did it. Nice. Good. Oh, it slipped out, but you had it. Right goes over. And left goes over. I'm confused again. I know, I get it, but so I So like, boom. Right over left. Right. And then he goes behind. Did right. I do it? You did do it. You got it. Good job. Look at that. All by yourself. Do it again. Now this time the left goes over and tucks under, right? Did I just do it? And then you pull them and you see how they're locked together? Yeah. Good job. Okay, now... Oh no, I'll show you. You guys can just throw your ropes over here. Now I'm going to show you how to make a rope you can practice on. Yeah, you can just show me that. Well, see, did I do it? Everybody has it. You did it. Uh, All right, look here. What if I didn't have any rope to tie knots with? I have to make rope. Remember that gauze we used last week? Yes. Look, I made a rope out of it. Her gauze is in her room on her floor. Oh, very good. Now you can make a rope out of your gauze. Now this is going to be even tougher than knots, but it's more fun. I just twist it, twist it, and then I put it behind, and then I twist the next one and put it behind. I'm making it look easy, but I've had a lot of practice. It's just twist, twist, turn, twist, twist, turn, twist, twist, turn, twist, twist, turn. And then when I let go, it stays there. And look how strong it is. How's that happen? And I'm going to make it out of this. Let's go up and do this in the sun, though. So let's head upstairs on the sidewalk. We'll get some sunlight on us. Yes, good job. Nice. Hey, leave your ropes down here.